Here's an overview of the node I just finished. The radio is an ICOM ICF621-2. I think it goes from 400 something up to 512 megahertz. The node is a Pi 2, and I've got a Techno by George ARA1 as the URI, the USB radio interface. So this is kind of a unique situation. Maybe not that unique. Um, this application is used for like RVs and boats and stuff. But uh, when I was going through the process of getting internet to this thing, I first tried a little USB um, adapter like this, and this does work great. It's made by Cable Matters. It's probably a, some kind of Realtek uh, chipset in there. But um, on regular Raspbian or other kind of more graphical Linux distributions for, for Raspberry Pis, this thing will pop right up and, and you can use it out of the box uh, most of the time. Then you can get your Wi-Fi for the Raspberry Pi 2 through this thing. This thing is kind of old, you know, like the Pi 3s and, and 4s have the Wi-Fi built in, so no worries. Uh, but this one was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, so it's a very low budget um, node here. And it's, you know, I think it's pretty powerful for what it is. This is a 45 watt radio. It's on low right now because uh, I don't need 45 watts going out just around the house. I can get up to three something miles out of it because it is connected to my Ed Fong DBJ2 antenna, which is way over there on the peak of my garage. So it's, it's not bad, it's not the best, but it's better than uh, like a mag mount mounted somewhere. Anyway, so that's the radio and the, uh, and the Pi and the interface. Uh, I paid 40 bucks for the radio. The Pi was a Christmas present, so that was free. This was 20 bucks. Um, anyway, the antenna was, I think, $20 with a club group buy. So that was a good deal too, and that's this radio is going into it as well. The uh, the two meter is going into it. This is UHF. So I've got a uh, duplexer down here. Then I've got my power supply, which I made from a little China, you know, power supply. That's what's inside of it. <laughs> All right. So getting the internet out here for the Pi, it's going in through the ethernet, but it's not hardwired. Um, I'm out in the back of my garage, and yes, I could have run some ethernet out here if I really wanted to. It would have probably taken quite a while. My attic isn't really a proper attic. I can't get up there and walk around in it. So I would have had to do some pretty creative runs, which I didn't really want to do. I'd have to get cable and terminate it and all that stuff, because um, I didn't have any long runs. The longest run I have is 50 feet. I don't think that would make it at all. So I was like, how can I do this wirelessly? Uh, after I figured out that this little guy is not going to work. Um, I tried loading the extra drivers from hamvoip.org.net. Uh, um, that didn't do anything to help me out. And nothing I did got this to work. And I was reading in the documentation that it's best for the Pi, the Pi 2 to use the hardwired connection. And they said, well, if you have some kind of a like Wi-Fi to Ethernet converter, you should use that. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm on the right track. I have this Ubiquiti Bullet M2. I've had this laying around for a long time. I, it was old when I bought it. And I bought it about five years ago. I uh, used it for um, audio mixing consoles for uh, the wireless iPad function on it. It's a 2.4 gigahertz, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and so it's in station. It's set up as a station in bridge mode. So it's just connecting to my access point in the house. And through this, it's just the longest Ethernet. I mean, the, sh 
<laughs> I, I'm short on Ethernet cable, so I've got a, a the 50 foot run back here rolled up, and that's going to the PoE injector, and that goes into the the back of the Pi with a shorter run. I've got like a three footer to go from from the PoE to this, um, and then so it's it's connected to my home internet. It's fine. This iPad is also connected on the same network so I can look at Almon and, and Supermon and all that stuff and get online and look look, look up call science or whatever. Um, so that's the setup. And uh, this this radio was actually a really good choice for for the node because it does have it doesn't have a DB9 on the back of it out of the box, but you can open it up and plug an accessory cable in. It's the OPC uh, dash 617 accessory cable for the ICOM radios. Uh, several different radios use the same one. But those on eBay, I was seeing them for about 50 bucks, and you know, I've seen them for 20, and I should have bought one. Um, it, it terminates to a DB9. This one has a DB9 on it. It's pretty nice, the ASU 2600. So I could have used this radio too, but I, I like this one better because you can actually dial in frequencies, and this is all, you know, you have to do it on the computer. Um, but yeah, so it would have, <clears throat> if I had that OPC 617 cable, you plug it in onto a little connector on the board. Uh, you've got a solder pad, solder pad D, and then um, you'll get audio in and out of it. So I didn't want to buy that cable, so what I did was I got some two or 1.25 millimeter pitch JST connectors, and I could only buy them as a pack of um, like 40 from Amazon. I don't have them out here. I'd, I'd show you what I bought if I did. I'm looking around. No, I don't have any out here. Unless I put them in this drawer. Yes, I did. Cool. So yeah, I had to buy this whole pack. And so all I was using were these little guys. I couldn't find an 11 pin or a nine pin. Like all they were selling were these kits of, of like all of these ends and you have to make them which would have been fine, but I didn't want to pay 10 bucks for all that. So this was seven, which, you know, it's, I only needed four, three or four of these. So what I did is I had to trim off the little tabs that stick out on each end. Just shave those, but yeah, like shave those down on the sides so it's flat on both sides so they could, so they could stick in next to each other without bumping into each other. And so I took these, the, the these leads and soldered them in and insulated them to these five cables here. And so it's uh, audio in, out, uh, COS, and uh, PTT. So those all go into this board. Um, on this particular radio, on the 621, it's using the discriminator audio out, not the PA audio out. The PA audio is a bit low uh, for the node. It was, um, you know, it's meant to drive like a speaker, so it's not gonna, or meant to drive an amplified speaker, I, I would imagine, so it wouldn't pass the signal to this high. Five, K, Z, K, garage, node, P, L, one, hundred. All your base are belong to us. Yeah, it's, it's an ID itself. Um, I customized that a little bit, and it's pretty easy to do. But yeah, that's that's the setup. A little, little node here. I'm probably going to put this in a box at some point. I don't like it just hanging out and I'll maybe give it a fan um, because it does get pretty hot since we're in Texas and um, if, if there's a net going on this thing heats up pretty good and there's no fan on it it's just passive you can put a fan on the back of it there's like screw holes back here to put one on I'll have to figure out what size fan that is and then figure out how to get a thermostat hooked up to it so I can kick it on and off at a certain temperature. But yeah, that's the setup. Wi-Fi comes in through RF, <laughs> goes to the Pi, goes out of the antenna to the HT. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and if anyone has any questions about um, these, these ICOM land mobiles, if you're gonna use one for a node, um, they're, they're very similar between the different models I've noticed in my research. 
So um, feel free to ask any questions if you have any.